Welcome back to the Underwater Filming Tips series. My name is Vanessa Karake, and in this episode, we're covering a topic that has been requested a lot. How to color grade your underwater footage. Or better, how to color grade your footage when you messed up your white balance. So when your image is too green or too blue. Of course, we cannot cover everything in one episode, so it's gonna be spread out over multiple episodes. So this is gonna be the first episode on color correction. And by the way, if you want us to color grade your footage, leave a comment below with the hashtag BTM color grade my footage, as mentioned, in the previous episode. And just so you know, this episode is going to be focused on Adobe Premiere Pro and on the channel mixer effect. And you can find this effect in other editing software too. It might be called slightly different, something like RGB mixer. And just as a disclaimer, there is no right and wrong and there are plenty of ways how to color grade your footage. This episode is just an example how we like to color grade our footage. So I have the laptop here and then I'm going to run through how everything works. So let's dive right into it. So before we start with the channel mixer effect, you're going to need your scopes. And with Premiere, you can open up the scopes on the window and then Lumetri scopes. And then choose the ones you need to actually see what you're color correcting and how you're affecting the different color channels. And the ones that you're going to need first of all are the YUV vector scopes, the RGB waveform and the RGB parade, which is the most important one here. And later, maybe you can pull up the histogram. And the reason why the RGB parade is so important is because you can see the different color channels, the red, the green, and the blue and then you can actually see if there is any red color information in your image that you can boost and that you can color correct. So if there's a slight red color information then you may be able to restore your footage and normally when you would color correct your footage in Adobe Premiere you would use the Lumetri color panel. So you would start off with resetting your white balance and then choose a more or less neutral part of the image and then you would adjust your exposure and your contrast and after that you would adjust the RGB curves and the overall contrast, and then the red, blue, and the green channel separately. And if the image is still a bit too red, you can bring down the red saturation in the hue over saturation panel. Because the image has a little too much green tint now, you can choose the green color range and then push it towards the blue in the hue versus hue section. In the color wheels, you can add a bit of red to the shadows and the midtones. And then you can go back to the basic color correction and then readjust your exposure. And if your white balance has a slight magenta tint, you can pull it towards the warmth in the temperature slider. Now you can see that the white sand is more or less neutrally colored. And if we turn the Lumetri effect on and off, you can really see the difference it's made. And in the RGB parade, you can really see that we enhance the red color channel a lot. This is really a difficult shot to work on, but this is the reason why we're doing this episode. The overall look of the image is not bad, but we can clearly do a lot better with the channel mixer effect. And before we add the channel mixer effect, we want you to understand how it affects the red, green, and blue channel. So we just made a new sequence and if you want you can test it out and follow along to actually understand how it works and try it out yourself. So first of all we're going to make a square and duplicate it so that we have three separate squares. And now we have to color them red, green and blue. So the first one 100% which means 255 is the highest value for 100% red and zero for the green and for the blue. And the second one is gonna be 100% green, so 255 in the green value and zero in the red and in the blue. The last square, we're gonna color 100% blue, so that means 255 in the blue value and zero in the reds and in the greens. So now we have our RGB colors. Next up, we want to add an adjustment layer above the clips in the timeline that are our RGB squares. You can rename the adjustment layer to, for example, adjustment layer channel mixer, so you know that the effect is lying on this layer, or just use a different label color to highlight the adjustment layer. If you go over to the effects panel, and if you don't see it, you can pull it up if you go to the menu and the windows and then you just pull up effects. Once you're in the effects panel, you type in channel mixer and the important part here is that you choose the channel mixer in the video effects section and not in the audio effects. Once you find the effect, simply drag and drop it onto your adjustment layer. And the reason for using adjustment layer in this case is because we want the effect to apply to all of the layers. This is simply for demonstration. Later, you can pull the effect right onto your clip layer. Now you can go to the effects control panel and same here. If you don't see it, go to windows and then effect controls and then it will pull up that window. Once you apply the effect, you can see all the values the channel mixer effect has. And there you can see the three color channels, R, G and B. So if you add red to the green channel, you can see the green square becomes yellow because if you mix red to green, it becomes yellow. Yeah. 
And if you add green to the red channel, it becomes yellow as well. So it doesn't matter which way around you do it, you end up with the same color. But what does matter is what tint your footage has. So if it's tinted red, blue or green. So if your footage has a green tint, you want to add some red to green to neutralize the green color and to bring the whole image to a neutral color spectrum. But if your image is too red, it doesn't make sense to apply red to the green channel. In that case, you want to add green to the red channel to neutralize the red color. And here it's simply for demonstration and you can play around to understand what you're affecting and how. So let's get back to the values. If you add red to the blue channel, it will turn magenta. And same goes the other way around. If you add blue to the red channel, it turns magenta too. And if you add blue to the green channel, it turns cyan. And if you add green to the blue channel, it turns cyan as well. Same, same. And the most common values you're gonna be using in this effect is adding red to the green channel and adding red to the blue channel. Okay, so now we can actually add the channel mixer to our shot. So here we have the submarine shot from the beginning. We can apply the channel mixer effect to the layer and then we can see in the RGB parade that there is very little red information left. So we will try to boost the reds and neutralize the image so that it's properly balanced. It has a lot of green color information and it has even more blue color information. So we will start off with adding red to the green and to the blue channel. And now the image has a slight magenta tint. You have the vector scope and there you can see that it's shifted towards the magenta and blues. So to bring that back to a more neutral color, which is sort of the middle section of the vector scope, we have to add the color that is opposite that color. And because we don't have a magenta slider in the channel mixer effect, we're gonna have to use a color that is closest to magenta, which is blue. So we're gonna add a bit of green to the blue channel. And like that, you can compensate for the magenta tint. And then you can bring the red back down a bit in the blue channel so that it's balanced towards the middle of the vector scope. And that's it. Now, if we toggle between the original and the color corrected image, you can see major improvements in the image. And watch how the color channels shift in the scopes between the two versions. Now, if you compare this with the previous color correction we've done in the beginning with the Lumetri color correction, there is simply no comparison. And this is just to properly balance your image. Now you can go into fine tuning your color correction. You can increase the contrast with the curves and add a little warmth and red to the shadows and midtones. Basically, it's up to you how you want to fine tune and color correct your image. So let's go to the next clip also filmed from the submarine. And here you can see that there's more red information than in the previous clip, but still not a lot. So we will add red to the green and red to the blue channel. And just by doing that, you can already see a massive difference. Now the tone is slightly too blue, so we can reduce the blue in the red channel. So you just pull the slider towards a negative value. It's gonna reduce the blue in the red channel, so leaving a bit warmer tone. And toggling between the original and the color graded footage, it looks way better. And as you can see in the bottom part, the sand has the color that the sand should have. The image looks overall a bit washed out, so we can go into the curve section of the Lumetri color correction panel and then adjust the curves to increase the overall contrast. So we pull down the shadows that they are a bit more black. And you can see the shift in the RGB parade in the waveform and the histogram. When you bring the shadows towards the black, it will shift towards the bottom line, which is zero. And zero is black and 100 is white. So next up, we have a clip with divers. This shot is clearly too blue, but it has enough red color information to work with. So we're gonna drag and drop the channel mixer effect onto the clip and then start to add red to the blue and green channel again. And then in the vector scope, you can see how the color shifts towards the center from the blue range. Now the blue might have a slight magenta tint and to compensate for that, we will just add a little green to the blue channel as the green is the complementary color to magenta. And if we want, we can increase the blues of the blue channel to make the blue more vivid. But now the skin tones of the divers have a slightly blue tint as well but we can get rid of that by lifting the reds in the red channel and then we'll get nice and warm skin tones and now the blue is slightly too magenta again so we're just going to add a bit of green to the blue channel and if you look closely you can see that the bubbles have a slight magenta tint they are not 100% white so we can add a bit of green to the red channel to compensate for that and then finally same same again 
increase the contrast with the curves so that you have a nice contrasted image. And if the blue water is slightly too magenta, then increase the greens again. If you compare the color graded chart to the original image, it's like night and day. And the next clip is gonna be a shark from Guadalupe Island. It's a pretty messed up shot and it's totally washed out. So let's see what we can restore. First, let's make it a bit simpler and zoom into the image so we can actually see what we're doing. And then add the channel mixer. We can see that the image has a lot of green information. So we'll start to add red to the green channel to neutralize the green color. And now the blue water has a slight magenta tint, so let's add a little green to the blue channel as green is complementary to magenta. And now if we want, we can increase the blues in the blue channel to make the color of the water nice and blue. And that really looks not bad already. We can adjust the curves to increase the contrast of the image and sharpen it a bit to make it pop. So the footage looks a bit too cold now and just to keep it simple and stick to the Lumetri panel, we can just simply warm the tone by using the white balance temperature slider in the basic color correction panel. And then you can do some minor tweaks to the highlights and shadows. And this looks so much better than the original footage. And you can see some bending in the image, but that's because it was filmed in slow motion on a GH5 at 180 frames per second in full HD and the bitrate of that setting is very low. So the quality of 180 frames per second on the GH5 is not very good for color grading. So that kind of footage has its limits and it's also upscaled to 4K for this video. So these are just things that you should be aware of. I would always recommend to film at the highest bitrate possible if you know you're gonna do a lot of color correction. Raw files are gonna give you the best options, but this is not a standard. So your file formats most likely are gonna be compressed. And usually slow motion has a lower bitrate, so you're gonna run into color grading issues a lot faster. Depending on the camera, 4K or HD 25, 30 frames a second, are most likely gonna have the best bitrate. But check your camera's manual to see what bit rates the different file formats and frame rates have. Bit depth and chroma subsampling are also two really important things when it comes to color grading, but we're gonna save those for an upcoming episode. And here's a little quick tip. If you want to get accurate colors, then use a calibrated screen. You can buy specific calibration tools to calibrate your monitor. And double check your final export on different screens, like on TVs, on tablets, on smartphones, or even on different monitors. And the second little quick tip is, if you have a white balancing card, don't only use it to white balance, also hold it up into your frame when you start recording. And if you have a color checker, hold that into your frame as well while you're recording. So you can use it as a reference. So you can tweak the colors in your project to match the colors on the color checker. But we're gonna have a whole episode later on on how to color grade with a color checker. And of course, try to get the best manual white balance in camera. Use a red filter when you're filming with ambient light. And if you're using video lights, try to get as close as possible to your subject. But check out the white balance and filters episode for more information on that. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And use the hashtag BTM color grade my footage if you want us to color grade your footage. Safe diving and I will hopefully see you in the next episode.